In 2016, a turning point. Protests in Venezuela left more than 100 people dead, and the situation for Venezuelans deteriorated fast, both politically and economically. Shortages of food, medicine, and basic necessities were the norm. The Dominican Republic hosted months of dialogue between Venezuela's government and the opposition. But at the beginning of 2018, the talk ended abruptly and without any consensus. Maduro's adversaries demanded new elections within the current presidential term. The government agreed and announced the elections would be held sooner than anticipated by the opposition, which did not have a solid candidate. There were accusations of unfairness as the opposition's main leaders were either imprisoned by the government or disqualified by the electoral body. The majority of the opposition parties then refused to participate in the elections and called their followers to do the same. So Nicolas Maduro participated in an election in May with almost no contenders, as the majority of the opposition sat out. Opposition candidate Henry Falcon didn't gather enough support from the other parties or their grassroots organizations. There was a low turnout with allegations of government vote buying and fraud. The Organization of American States, led by Secretary General Luis Almagro, called for the body to declare Maduro's government illegitimate. It was unsuccessful. Only 13 nations agreed. They formed the Lima Group, which didn't recognize the elections. Teniendo en cuenta la falta de legitimidad del proceso electoral venezolano, desconocen los resultados de las elecciones de ayer al haber sido convocados por una autoridad ilegítima, la Asamblea Nacional Constituyente. Y haré cumplir. In January 2019, President Maduro was sworn in for a second six-year term. Lawmakers in the opposition-controlled National Assembly voted for relative unknown politician Juan Guaido as head of the legislative body. With his new role as the head of the National Assembly, Juro. Guaido declared himself interim president of Venezuela with the backing of the United States, Canada and the Lima Group with the exception of Mexico, which did not recognize the move. While several of Venezuela's neighbors and other nations have joined the United States in siding with Guaido, other countries have been vocal in supporting Maduro's government, including Cuba, Russia and Turkey. И мы вместе с другими ответственными членами мирового сообщества будем делать все, чтобы поддержать правительство, законное правительство президента Мадура в отстаивании венесуэльской конституции и тех методов урегулирования кризиса, которые находятся в конституционном поле. The United States called a UN Security Council meeting on Venezuela to recognize Guaido. Now we have a new leader, Juan Guaido, in Venezuela who has promised to bring elections and constitutional order back to Venezuela and security back to the region. Now it's time for every other nation to pick a side. No more delays, no more games. Either you stand with the forces of freedom or you're in league with Maduro and his mayhem. Instead, it ended with a call for more political dialogue and to ease tensions and violence in the country. The U.S. Treasury Department then followed by imposing sanctions on Venezuela's main revenue source, its state oil company, adding to a worsening situation inside the country.